Pakistani people have never seen victory in their lives. And I'm telling you, this is very uh, important. एक हरी हुई कॉम है ना जिसने कभी जीत नहीं देखी इमरान खान हैज दैम बिलीविंग दैट ही हैज ही हैज दिस मैजिक बॉन्ड यू नो इमरान खान दिमाग से जिया दिए इसी द प्रॉब्लम इन पाकिस्तान इज दर माइंड सेट हैज बीन पॉइजनड अगेंस्ट इंडिया बिकॉज ऑफ द टेक्सट बुक्स इन गवर्नमेंट स्कूल फाइव ईयर ओल्ड किड हुज इन स्कूल वो बेचारा अपने को क्या करेगा ही इज टॉट ही इज टॉट दैट हु इज यर एनिमी हिंदू इज यर एनिमी इंडियन इज एनिमी क्रिश्चन इज यर एनिमी जू इज यर एनिमी दे आर ऑल आउट टू गेट यू दिस दिस मूवी ना शोले वो वीरू टैंकर के ऊपर चढ़ा रहता है ना कि अगर मेरी बसंती से शादी नहीं करी तो फिर हैजा हो जाएगा गाँव में लोग मर जाएंगे अगर मैंने सुसाइड कर लिया तो दैट इज पाकिस्तान सिटिंग ऑन द वाटर टैंकर ड्रंक एंड टेलिंग द वर्ल्ड कि हमारे पास न्यूक्लियर वेपन है बॉस अगर हमें पैसा नहीं दिया तो फिर तुम देखना क्या होता है एंड देव बिन डूइंग इट सक्सेसफुली इन बलोचिस्तान यू कॉन्ट इमेजन दी एगनी of the parents the brothers and the sisters when people have been taken away the world will be a safer place without pakistan namaste jai hind welcome to another edition of ani podcast with smita prakash today my guests are mr tilak deveshar and major gorav arya two pakistan experts mr deveshar is the author of three widely acclaimed books on pakistan and has also edited three books on pakistan for the vivekananda international foundation his new book is on the pashtuns also on the podcast is gaurav arya who's an indian army veteran and is the founder of the chanakya forum he's a public speaker who you would have seen on many tv debates and on social media Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deveshar. Thank you, Gaurav, for coming today and talking to us. So, uh, this is going to be a very interesting conversation, I'm sure, regarding Pakistan. I'll begin with you, uh, Mr. Deveshar. You've written this book on uh, Pakistan, which I'm going to get to shortly. But first, I want to ask you about the events, the current events which are happening in Pakistan. It's very interesting because uh, in in the years that I have been following Pakistan, I've never seen the kind of demonstrations that are going on. right now you know posters against uh, against the pakistan army them going and uh, attacking or uh, you know the core commander's house uh, huge crowds going for a civilian it's all for imran khan these are uh, these are uh, supporters of imran khan and so for a civilian cause uh, which is for restoration of him to become prime minister supposedly that's the cause attacking the pakistan army this is something which is absolutely new how do you see it you you're such an avid pakistan watcher how do you see these events yeah. <clears throat> first of all spita thank you so much for inviting me to your show even though this has been a not been in existence for too long it's become extremely popular thank you so i feel honored and a privilege to come uh, that you've invited me you see two things have happened in uh, pakistan to understand the background of what is happening imran khan was removed as prime minister through a democratic process of the vote of no confidence but his ego does not accept that he could be removed he feels insulted so since april when he was removed till now he has remained in the limelight galvanized the mass masses and using a false narrative instead of as a politician theek hai aaj haar gaye we'll come back tomorrow he has not accepted that so he uses this false narrative of an american conspiracy and tapped into the deep anti-americanism in pakistan one second before yeah. uh, you explain this more uh, there are some uh, viewers some uh, some listeners who may not understand this concept of the american nar- narrative or the uh, the false narrative if you could just slightly explain this yeah. what happened so um he claims that a official of the us state department threatened the pakistani ambassador in washington that in case imran khan is not removed relations with the us will deteriorate and in case he is removed you know certain beneficial things would happen and this imran khan said was sent to the ambassador sent this as a telegram uh, or a cipher document to for then he pulled it out and waved it in a meeting in a public meeting in march that this is the american conspiracy the americans wanted me out because i said no to their bases i went to russia and you know, a host of other things there is a deep rooted anti americanism in pakistan and he's managed to tap into that to that he's added anti army anti establishment again 
it's a it's a very popular thing too so this has been his so this is one thing that has happened in pakistan so how is this a uh, thing uh, of you know that there is you are saying this uh, deep rooted anti americanism lekin uh, hum log to sab ye sochte the ki wo teen a's hain uh, america allah aur uh, uh, army ye teen hain these are the pillars like you know india has you have we have the pillars of democracy uh, where we have the executive the judiciary and uh, uh, you know the, the media also the fourth pillar but uh, in pakistan it was these three pillars so aap anti americanism kahan se aa gaya because pakistani leaders have always milked anti americanism to get more money from america okay if you recall in the case of musharraf he created this scare that if i don't protect you there will be a takeover of the islamists hmm. so the, but for the domestic audience they will keep criticizing the americans though they will willing to do anything that the americans want hmm. so that's why there is anti americanism and not from now abhi se nahi hai anti americanism has been there for a long time so imran khan was installed by the army where did things sour between him and the army you see in october last year when bajwa general bajwa wanted to post faiz amid was dg is as core commander because in case he was to be in contention for the army chief he had to command a core so he wanted to push him out in october imran khan for reasons that are not very clear or people hint at it and these are non professional reasons didn't want to let go of faiz amid hmm. and he wanted he said no we we'll, he should continue for some more time and things like that hmm. so then bajwa said look he just has to go and this was the understanding and he issued the orders Imran Khan didn't sign on the orders, so it kept pulling, pulling, pulling. November ho gaya. Then sometimes I think in uh, towards end of November, because 29th November 22, Bajwa retired. So if Faiz Amin had to be in contention, he had to do a core at least for one year before that. Hmm. So finally, Imran Khan relented. Now you see, in Pakistan, the army has favorite politicians, but they will never allow a politician to have favorite generals. and that's when the institutional interest of the army came in and they said nothing of the sort we are not going to allow that the politician to choose which general goes where and you know you can't interfere in the chain of command and the posting that's how relations started deteriorating with them why is it so important uh, to have your man as the isi chief for an for a prime minister for imran khan it was critical why because as um, uh, parvez alahi put it very uh, in a very punjabi way that the army was even changing his nappies he didn't know how to change his nappies so the day to day management of parliament of putting together his majority putting together his coalition all was managed by the isi all the uh, the bills that had to be passed the election of the senate chairman everything was done by the army therefore he wanted see, somebody see by the army or by the isi see uh, let's clarify this Haan. here isi reports to the prime minister okay. uh, technically the dgisi is selected by the prime minister but because he is is serving army officer, officer okay there is no way he can go against the wishes of the army chief only once i think when benazir bhutto she appointed um, this uh, uh, general kallu as the dgisi all along the dgisi has been with the consent of the army chief so tell me uh, in the pecking order it's the army chief on top and then uh, isi chief uske baad aata hai nahi kyunki you know they, you see in popular uh, films and all these things that jaise picture ke piche isi ka uh, camera laga hua hai and you know in in no it's the army chief <laughs> and the core commanders okay you know the nine core commanders are that is the college gate leadership and then which core commander is the most important rahul pindi rahul pindi Ten, ten, ten co, you know, which is he's the uh, critical man. Just all the coups are there. Triple one, triple one brigade is uh, reports to him. Plus, also he uh, the uh, units facing India, FCNA and things like that are all commanded by hmm. the Pindi Corps command. Hmm. So this is one element of the equation. Okay. That is Imran Khan. The second equation is that Bajwa General Bajwa retires on 29th November, and Imran Khan actually wanted to appoint Faiz Amin as the army chief. now he can't because there's a different government so he is putting pressure on this government to postpone the appointment of the army chief till after the elections he hopes to win the elections and appoint the army chief and he's told bajwa i'll give you an extension <coughs> till such time as the elections are held that is one part of it the other part of it is that he does not want this government to appoint the senior most three star general hmm. 
that is Asim Munir hmm. as the army chief. Okay. Because there is no love lost between Imran Khan and Asim Munir. You see, Asim Munir was DG ISI, and within eight months, Imran Khan got rid of him for reasons again that were not professional. So he got rid of Asim Munir within eight months of being DG ISI, and appointed Faiz Ahmed in his stead. So there is a panga. There, there is a khundak between Asim Munir and Imran Khan, and Imran Khan feels that if Asim Munir is appointed as army chief by Shahbaz Sharif's government, then the next three years when he is going to be army chief, Imran Khan will be in the wilderness. Okay. So that is the hurry for him to ensure that elections are announced. The new army chief is appointed only by the new government and not by this government. Okay. I'm going to come to you, uh, Gaurav. Yes. You are uh, you're quite a legend in Pakistan. You know, when I don't have anything else to do, sometimes I just watch on Twitter and see all the memes that are made on you, where your face has been taken and Jinnah's cap has been made, and then and you're called the father of the nation in Pakistan. You've been hanged metaphorically several times in Pakistan for all your views on it. So I'm going to get to the social media part of it, but before that, I want to ask you what I asked uh, Mr. Devesh. The same question is, how do you view what is happening in Pakistan these days, does it surprise you at all? Uh, and you know, like there are people like Sushant Sareen and all who say that what we can't do, what the Indian Army can't do, what the Pakistan or Imran Khan has done in Pakistan, mein, which is going and you know demonstrating or attacking the house of uh, in Peshawar of the Corps Commander. So, what do you, how do you see all this happening? Uh, thank you for inviting me, Smita. When it when it happened, you know, for the first time, I could not believe that such a thing is happening in Pakistan because. Uh, uh, like you said, the three A's. Hmm. That is what we have, that is the steady diet that we've been brought up on. That, you know, Allah, America and the army. But uh, I think what is happening is A, uh, like you say in Hindi, this is a, a fight for sovereignty. Also, uh, overall sovereignty of who, who controls Pakistan and who controls the future of Pakistan. That is on the face of it. Hmm. Like Mr. Devashar very, very correctly said, you know, it's also a race to appoint the new army chief. Because while every Democrat in Pakistan might speak about democracy, but all of them have been appointed uh, by the army or the creation of the army, hmm. creation of Rawal Pindi. Uh, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto was the creation of uh, Ayub Khan. And then they're killed by the army also. Because, because they start thinking they are God. Hmm. And this is, this is the problem. Ay Ayub Khan created Zulfikar Ali Bhutto and Zulfikar Ali Bhutto was hanged by Ziaul Haq. The problem is that they go against the institution. And institutional loyalty uh, has been very, very important for the Pakistani army. It's only now hmm. that uh, this is what uh, uh, one of my Pakistani friends who's a journalist said that there are, there are two kinds of generals in Pakistan. You know, uh, uh, you know, uh, Dali wale or Daru wale. Hmm. So he says that the, 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 the religious kinds, you know, who pray five times a day and then there are these whiskey swelling generals hmm. of the Pakistan army and... Uh, he said, this is one of the divides of the Pakistani army. Now, what he has done is, I think Imran Khan, through this long march, he has tapped into, uh, like Mr. Devashar said, of course, anti-Americanism, because that has been there for a very long time. In spite of the fact that Pakistan... Relies so much on America. Is, no, it's pretty much afloat because of the Americans, yeah, for exactly. all practical purposes. But also the fact that, you know... Uh, this, this, uh, uh, the, the Pakistani people have never seen victory in their lives. And I'm telling you, this is very uh, important. So when somebody comes, uh, you know, their, their, their diplomacy is uh, down, mm -hmm. right? Their economy was never up. All right. Uh, uh, their army has lost all the wars. And uh, every time, you know, uh, the head of state is seen with a begging bowl somewhere in the world and all this gets back to the Pakistanis they have extremely low self-esteem do and they kind of, yes I mean, do you think that absolutely because we say that they have lost wars yes but uh, you know, the, the narrative is that they have won the wars no but now the protest is coming in the protest is coming in the protest is coming in the protest you can only do it against us why don't you fight against India we have seen you in 71 we have seen you in 65 Hmm. This is what common Pakistanis are telling the army. And they know that Pakistani studies is all fraud. Hmm, hmm, they know hmm. it's fake. So coming back to what I was saying, Smita, what has happened in Pakistan is suddenly here comes a guy who says that, you know, I'll give you a new Pakistan. I'll give you a new Madinah. Now, these thoughts evoke 
explain riyasat e madina riyasat e madina was what prophet muhammad created in madina hmm. Hmm. after his flight from makkah hmm. which is the basis of the islamic calendar the hijrat yeah. and he created a society that uh, was based on the principles of justice and Righteousness. equality huh. yes and they said ki ye sadiq aur amin hoga jo bhi pakistan ka hmm. jo bhi uh, leader hoga sadiq aur amin he who can be trusted he who is loyal hmm. so is Imran Khan Sadiq Amin Absolutely not then I I will say I will say to you what Imran Khan said to the television anchor absolutely not hmm. Imran Khan is neither Sadiq nor Amin hmm. Imran Khan is slightly less corrupt than the Sharifs but you the kitho da sharif you know that whole line <laughs> it's the same <laughs> thing kitho hai nawaz sharif ha yeah. na pyo sharif na ma <laughs> sharif kitho hai sharif that was the Kala line of the slogan yeah that used to be the the slogan for sharif and now here it is sadiq amin yes. kahan ka sadiq kahan ka amin yes huh. so uh, this i i think this pretty much sums up imran khan this is what uh, this is what he's trying it's it's a past struggle it's interesting if i can interrupt yes he was taken to shaukat khan hospital when the people from the other hospital came no, but this is after the attack after the attack ha huh. when the people from but the listen other... that attack was no I, i'm just saying a different thing on sadiq and amin okay so they wanted to do a blood test and x-ray reports for a medical or legal case to file a complaint they refused to hand over the blood test because it would have traces of drugs now this is a conspiracy theory it's not no, a conspiracy it's not. theory it's true it's not it's true they refused and gayab kar diye x-ray bhi gayab kar diye blood report bhi gayab kar diye and then you have shabash didn't... sharif saying ki post mortem kyun nahi hua <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah did you hear that sabki angrezi thodi kamzor hai theek hai okay yeah, yeah. Huh. but this is a fact <laughs> they did not allow the do- new doctors set of doctors i think from jinnah hospital or something to come and take his blood report or the x-rays hmm because sadiq and amin saab has got um, traces of uh, drugs in his blood okay so sorry for huh. no so yeah so tell me what did you feel when you saw these uh, uh, you know the the uh, peshawar se jo pictures aa rahi thi uh, that entire night when one saw uh, and it's gone worldwide you know the pti supporters across the globe have in many cities of the world uh, they've held these protests where they are saying and suddenly you're seeing people coming on the streets protesting against the pak army talking for democracy in pakistan it seems a little bizarre you know that this is happening did you also feel that uh, when you saw that did you also get that sense that it, this is odd absolutely i i was shocked when i heard uh, because because all the coups in pakistan have pretty much been bloodless hmm. i mean the people don't get on the streets and people don't protest against the pakistan army that's just hmm. not done uh, when i saw those images outside the core commander's house i was a little surprised i said this is taking it too far now then they tried to climb the 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 walls into the governor's mansion and stuff like that in punjab and every uh, all other places also they started this yes yes uh, i was pretty surprised but uh, this is what imran khan has people believing especially overseas pakistanis also a lot of pakistanis inside pakistan crores of them but imran khan has them believing that he has he has this magic wand you know hmm. nobody has asked imran what your economic policies are going to be nobody has asked him what your diplomatic policies are going to be let's say you do become prime minister in the next 6 months what are you going to do no there is this desperation that's what i'm saying a people who have always lost it's not just about wars lost this game of life in every indicator whether mm. it's passport whether it's public health they are at the bottom mm. they are being compared with afghanistan and sudan and here is somebody who comes up and says this is what i'm going to give you i'm going to give you riyasat e madina where everybody will have justice there'll be fair play there'll be equality and you know it'll be a true democracy this man who says he's going to give pakistanis true democracy then turns around and tells kamar javed bajwa ki jab mujhe prime minister laga do aap hmm this is the dichotomy that pakistanis have no clue how to deal with because they think it's just another day of office i mean but uh, just to uh, you know uh, be the devil's advocate here do you think that imran khan kind of realized that without the army at that stage there was no way he could have come into civilian uh, power it was it possible because he came from no big political family nothing else he didn't have money power he didn't have anybody on his side so he needed uh, no everybody even people with money power big family ties huge zamindars everybody yeah. they don't they don't make it without the army's without help or army's army. blessings yeah imran khan was brought as a counterweight to the sharifs hmm. 
And the interesting part is, you know, this is the stick that Imran Khan uses today to beat the army with. So the army created a narrative. The ISI created a narrative that the Sharifs are corrupt. The Zardaris are corrupt. Here is a man who is not corrupt. You know, and they kept on saying that the Zardaris are corrupt and the Sharifs are corrupt. Now, yeah. this is exactly what Imran Khan is telling the army today. Today, correct. That mujhe kyun hataya? And you put the corrupt people there, you put the chores and the dakes there, all the while you have been saying that he's corrupt and now he's there, you've put him there and you've removed me. Correct, correct. So this is how he's turned it around. Yeah. And, uh, and also if I can just add, hmm. see the narrative he's built for the last six months, all the fact that his government was a failure has been drowned, has been totally diverted the attention of the people. If you recall, you know, he came and he said, Aapne ghabrana nahi hai. Hmm. And then people started saying, Yaar, hunte sanu de. You know, the situation hmm. was so bad. But all that has been swept under the carpet. And as Gaurav rightly mentioned, what is his program? Not one speech in the last six months has he said, I will do this. He just says, I was removed by a conspiracy. You bring me back to power. And Riyasat Madina, Doodh ki Nadiya Bhaengi. I get that, uh, that, you know, he's not talking about policies and he's not talking about what he can do and all. But remember that when there is talk of a revolution, policy matters don't really come on the floor. Abhi, ye, ab, uh, if you see in India, India, uh, Rahul Gandhi is out on this Bharat Jodo Yatra. But policy thodi na, to, to bring about some kind of motivation in the people, policy matters nahi hoti. Wo emotional connect uh, jodne ki baat hoti hai. But, you know, let me come, uh, let me move a little bit away from uh, Imran. Though uh, Imran Khan does a feature in your book. Uh, I'm showing the book right now. Uh, it's called The Pashtuns by Tilak Deveshar, uh, A Contested History. The first thing that came to me was like, ye Pashtun jo hai, wo har cheez pe contest karte hai, history pe bhi contest kar rahe hai. But then when I got around to reading it, and uh, it's very interesting, it's a voluminous book. Uh, it talks about so much about you know, uh, what a bloody past it has been for them and how difficult uh, it has been their past, present and it doesn't look like the future is going to be any different either. Uh, very interesting reading. Uh, but quite rightly, you start off by saying that, you know, what are our early memories of uh, Pashtuns, of Pathans? Hum sab ke liye it was Kabuliwala. You know, we all thought of it as Kabuliwala and then later you got to know that, yeah, okay, uh, Dilip Kumar... His real name was Yusuf and he was a Pathan. Uh, but then you also uh, talked about how the uh, Ayub Khan was a Pathan, their, pre their prime minister, our pres uh, their president. And our president uh, was also uh, uh, a Pathan. And then you talked about Madhubala, which I didn't know that she also had Pathan lineage. Yes. Uh, I didn't know that. And Mansoor Ali Khan Patauti. So then Saif Khan uh, becomes. So then explain to me that, you know, how is it that uh, that the Pathans have this cultural affinity regardless of their political boundaries that, you know, divide our countries, whether it's Afghanistan, Pakistan, India? What is it that binds Pathans across these three countries? We have civilizational links way back centuries. Mm. Even the Mahabharat, Gandhari is actually Peshawar. Pesha. Then you had the Maurya, Chandragupta Maurya and Ashoka, who, whose empire encompassed what is today um, or the Pashtun land or Afghanistan. You have so many Buddhist um, monuments and uh, inscriptions from Ashoka's time. And in fact, before the uh, Islam came to Afghanistan, there was a Hindu Shai kingdom in Kabul and a Buddhist kingdom in Bamiyan. And thereafter, then the Pashtuns started migrating towards India. The Delhi Sultanate, you had the Khiljis, you had the Lodis, you had the Suris, and then you had the uh, Rohilas. You had um, uh, principalities in Bhopal, uh, you had principalities in Tonk, Farukhabad. So there has been cross fertilization between India, the Indian subcontinent, and the uh, Pashtuns for going back centuries. In fact, you'll be surprised, but the largest repository of Pashtun documents are actually in India. Not only in museum, but in different houses and with different people. You know, enough research has not been done, but there was those who have. The largest, uh, you know, uh, manuscripts, books written in Pashto are, are in India. So there is a very strong uh, civilizational connection. Hmm. Now, you may have the Taliban in power today. And uh, <clears throat> the government of India, obviously, for obvious reasons, is not very hunky-dory with the Taliban. But people to people, so whether it's sending 50,000 tons of wheat or sending uh, COVID vaccines or any kind of other humanitarian assistance, we feel a sense of responsibility because there is a strong civilization uh, connection. Hmm. 
you know uh, gorav i'm going to uh, quote from mr deveshar's book which i one quote which i found very interesting i flagged it i flagged several quotations in fact one i found very interesting where uh, pakistan's prime minister liaquat ali khan he was asked in the constitu- he asked in the constituent assembly in 1948 when khan abdul ghafar khan was present and he said is pathan the name of a country or that of a community and gafar khan replies pathan is the name of a community and we will name the country pakhtunistan and his son wali khan was asked if he was a muslim or a pakistani or a pashtun first he replied that he he was a 6000 year old pashtun a 1000 year old muslim and a 27 year old pakistani you know i found this it is fascinating it's, yeah it's also gut wrenching ki hamari identity hai kya <laughs> you know all of us who live in the subcontinent in fact i i i don't recall exactly who it was who had once said that you know like a person who had a bangladeshi passport you know like she says that at one point of time i had a pakistani passport and before that i had an indian passport this is a person who has lived through 1947 has lived through 1971 and now is a bangladeshi i had interviewed her you know regarding a film which was made uh, on india bangladesh relations identities identity is so important and explain to me what it means to be a pakistani and still not be in in uh, in peace with one's identity you know like you mentioned about the pashtuns that pashtuns for uh, 6000 years the baloch have been saying the same thing you know mm. they say that uh, we are the inheritors of the mehrangarh civilization so they say baloch for 10000 years muslims for 1200 years and baloch and pakistani for 75 so this is what the baloch say now pakistan has always had a very serious identity crisis because they chose to define themselves in a certain manner and that is the root cause of the problem in pakistan Pakistan has always defined itself as we who are not India. Mm. So all the linkages, and this comes from Maulana Maududin also of the Jamaat-e Islami. It comes from that school of thought that you know uh, there's a very interesting thing in uh, in 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 uh, uh, in a book that I read long back uh, that you know be as far away from a Hindu house that you cannot see the cooking smoke coming out of the chimney. Mm. So that 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 was what was said. So. you remove yourself now how do you remove because because most of them have got hindu ancestry and therein lies the confusion so you concoct four fathers who came with mohammed bin qasim ha, you, in, they geographically removed themselves absolutely. away but linkage to nahi jata na linkage nahi jata ha. linkage nahi jata but 711 ad mohammed bin qasim comes to sindh and f- fights against raja dahir and my great 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 grandfathers came with the army of mohammed bin qasim and my great great grandfathers came from central asia or turkey or iran etc uh, etc et now the thing is that uh, you see and this is what is tearing pakistan at the seams also amongst amongst a lot of other factors bajwa is a sikh and hindu name hmm. chima is a sikh and hindu name musharraf he was here yes nawaz sharif is from here no not that simla ka hai no uh, not that huh? what i am saying smita is something else i am saying that these people still carry okay. hindu and sikh names yeah 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 okay so so राजा राजा परवेज अशरफ या राजा परवेज अशरफ यू नो परवेज इलाही जाट सम गुजर सम राजपूत सो लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल राणा सनाउल एज राजपूत ओके राइट एंड यू नो द सेठीज द चटाज द चीमाज द राठौर द चौहान all of them are in pakistan and they have not ch- many of them have not changed their second the last names the surnames hmm. Be- because yahan pe duality hai na hmm. you take pride in the fact that you are jat sikh but you are also a muslim yeah right pashtuns don't have that problem hmm. you know because pashtun for 6000 years they don't Why, have that problem is, uh, do the pashtuns in pakistan not have a problem with it with their identity yeah no they don't have a problem with their identity because it's a civilizational thing you see for them their identity as wali khan said i'm a 6 year old pashtun they have got culture they have got pashtun wali the way of the pashtun there you are know, more pathans used in your book i read i which i didn't know that there are more pakhtuns pashtuns pathans whatever you want to call them in pakistan than there are in uh, afghanistan i yes, think isn't it and karachi is the and largest Karachi. pashtun city in the world yeah 
more than uh, Jalalabad or Kabul, Kandahar, Peshawar. So then, but they don't identify themselves as Sindhis, even though they are in Sindh. Yeah. They identify themselves as Pashtuns. Yeah, just like the Mohajirs identify themselves as Mohajirs, mm. even though they are in Sindh, they came uh, from India in 47, but they treated themselves as a nationality. But they came in 47. The yeah. Pashtuns have been coming and going. They don't They don't admit to the Durand line. They, yeah. don't, they don't respect it. They don't yeah. believe in it. They've been coming and going. They don't see that divide. Yeah. At their because of their strong cultural, ethnic, linguistic commonality. Hmm. You see, all of them speak Pashto. Hmm. You call it Pashto in the north, you speak Pashto. Which Imran Khan doesn't speak, no, even he though speak. he's a Pathan. He claims, but actually he is... Punjabi from Miyawali has ancestral um, uh, Niazi, yeah. yeah uh, Pashto, but you know, settle all this time in But doesn't Punjab. speak Dari or Pashto, it seems. He does not, and the Niazi. Not Punjabi. Nor, he, speaks he speaks Punjabi. But but uh, the, the, the Niazis from Miyawali have been very kind to India. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, uh, AK Niazi in yeah. the same yeah, yeah, very nice. And th this one is doing extensive <laughs> damage. In fact, you know what? Smita recently had asked for people. Indians abroad to start funding the Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf and a lot of them have given money to Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf. I said Khan Saab ko paise ki kami nahi chahiye because he's on the long march, no? And he's going to shake up the system. So a lot of people are giving money now, 10, 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 50 pounds. People have started funding. Namanzoor.com is the website. I can't do it from India, otherwise I would have given half my salary low. Paisa low, Khan Saab, aap, you just stay true to your mission. Don't, don't back down now. So you are now creating the ground for another foreign funding case against Imran Khan. <laughs> is, there is certain prohibited funding. Oh you my can't God, take yes. funding from ha, ha. Uh, countries. Yes. You know. So, this will also be a problem for Imran Khan. But Imran Khan is doing wonders, I think. I, I said this long back. Ha. One, one and a half months back, I said that, uh, in fact, uh, I, I, I think I can claim to have uh, said it first, where I said that the Indian Army or the Indian Armed Forces would not have been able to do so much of damage that Imran Khan alone... Imran Khan dimaag se jihadi hai. He does not, you see, there, there, is, there is a dialogue from a Wo movie. What is not He's a, he's a cricketer, hai, Taliban Khan, hai, jihadi, everything is there. I'll wo. tell you, there, there is... And of course, he's this hunk. Yes. Which Jo everybody... In Arabi, we say so much, so much. Essentially, in his mind, he uses anarchy as a tool to get to power. So, there, there is a Batman movie, which he says, this, uh, uh, his, his, his butler, he goes to Bruce Wayne and the butler says that, uh, Alfred, I think his name is, and mm. Alfred says, Master Bruce, he tells the story that when he was in service, he was in the SAS, the Special Air Service of the British Army. And he says, I was in Burma and uh, there was this warlord who was throwing away rubies the size of a tangerine. The, he was throwing it away. And, uh, you know, he would fight for the rubies, he would steal the rubies, but then he would throw it away. So he said, if he's not selling them or trading in rubies, that is what Bruce Wayne asks him, he said, what's the point? Because he says, Master Bruce, there are some people who want to watch the world burn. Yeah. That is the nature of the man. If I cannot have Pakistan, you may as well drop a bomb. That is what he said. Mm. That is what he said. He wants to watch the world burn. If he cannot have it, then he does not care who has it. So one other thing about the Pashtun yeah, before you move on. Yeah, exactly. In your book, you mentioned this, that you know they are they are trying their level best to get over this image that is there with the Pashtuns that what uh, Gaurav just mentioned ki main nahi to koi nahi matlab ki jala denge aag laga denge par ladte rahenge this this thing of ladaku kaum that <sighs> as a community they want to fight and they are fighters but you know there again is hmm. a con this is the conception uh, narrative built by the british colonialists yeah. see there are no pashtun accounts of how they looked at the british or how they thought of themselves the only one account i came across was by gafar khan son ghani khan and I've quoted him extensively. What is a Pashtun actually? What does a Pashtun think a Pashtun is like? And it makes beautiful reading. You know, it really puts a lump in your throat that what does a Pashtun think a Pashtun is like? And it's not that they are fighters. Hmm. But because honor is the most important principle of Pashtun Wali, that is defending your honor on the triangle of Zar, Zan, Zameen, you know, women, wealth and land, they all carry weapons. And because of that, they have been given this impression. And because they opposed British military, um, uh, you know, uh, invasion of their land, so the British gave them a thing of they were a, they are fighters all the time. It's not that, but I think if uh, 
एक तो मैंने ये लिखा था ना वी आर कंटेंट विद एज वन एल्डरली पश्तून ट्राइज में टोल्ड एल्फिंस्टन वी आर कंटेंट विद डिस्कॉर्ड वी आर कंटेंट विद अलार्म्स वी आर कंटेंट विद ब्लड वी विल नेवर बी कंटेंट विद अ मास्टर बिकॉज again gary khan says that we are all rain sown wheat we all came up on the same day so all pashtuns are equal because they come from a common ancestor so and he also writes that if farmer with the dirty hands will put out his hand to shake hands with an emperor he has no blemish he has no consciousness of that because he feels he is an equal so achievement you know the the uh, status in society is achieved you're not born because you are somebody's son or somebody's thing it no, is achieved no what were the tribal loyalties in their tribal so they all they have to achieve it they have to be by fighting by owning more land by leading expeditions or whatever so they are the biggest democrats you know uh, gorov was mentioning about the baloches how are they different from the baloch in that respect you see the baloch have a uh, uh, sardar huh. who is head of the tribe and lot of respect in the case of the pashtuns there is no inherited no um, uh, sort of uh, heredity uh, khan it all achieved the status is achieved either through war owning more land more hospitality you know there is no khan without a dastar khan the bigger you can spread your table cloth and feed your village the more respect you command in society and people will then in a jirga a jirga is where everybody sits down together and sit in a circle hmm. there is no one who's the head man everybody is equal is there anything equivalent in india gorav do you see any tribe any oh yes in the northeast yes in the northeast in the northeast you have a gaon buda Hmm. a gaon buda is the head of the village and i've seen very senior uh, ministers and very senior rias officers but when they go back to their village they have absolutely no airs they'll walk around barefoot and the gaon buda calls the shots so yeah uh, this and, and and it's a very very uh, evolved society in the northeast hmm. northeast of india the nagas it's very egalitarian i absolutely, would say absolutely absolutely right? like the pashtuns you know they're very egalitarian yeah very. okay so uh, we were talking about the balochistan uh, thing you know how is it that suddenly there is now this pin drop silence as far as the baloch agitation is concerned it's you know the media's focus is only on the pti uh, uh, march and there's nothing the the maris are silent the buktis are silent kya hua kya hai camera chale gaya na wahan se main it's like the agnivir movement which happened hmm. and then suddenly they said that you know uh, Uddhav Thakre's government is collapsing, and all the media moved away to Uddhav Thakre. And suddenly, there was no Agni Veer. Next day, the <laughs> agitation died down. So that's it's, the media. It's yeah. the media. Okay, you want to point at us? Yes. Okay. All of a sudden. Ah, uh, आपकी बात अब सुप्रीम कोर्ट भी सुन लेगा, पाकिस्तानी सुप्रीम कोर्ट भी सुन लेगा. हम ही विलेन हैं हर चीज के. हाँ, बोलो. So, so that is that is you know that is uh, pretty much how uh, Balochistan, the Baloch are a minority in Balochistan, hmm. numerical minority. There are more Pashtuns in Balochistan. plus balochistan is spread over iran it is spread over pakistan thirdly the reason why you know i i often think and i could be wrong but i often think that if balochistan shared a border with india you see uh, if you want to if you want to support a secessionist movement you must have a border with that like for example kashmir like for example punjab hmm. it becomes difficult for any government to say that you know at the end of the day they are like an they are like australia as far as we are concerned they are an island because we we cannot reach it hmm. uh, we can only reach them either by land that way or sea directly otherwise there is no other way to get to balochistan and this is where they have suffered also abject yeah. poverty abject poverty yeah you talking about uh, you know uh, media focus uh, shifted from the baloch cause but the thing is that pakistani media has never really focused on anything any protest anything other than what happens in punjab <laughs> you know other they have not focused on the ptm march which is that it's been going on for so long regardless of whichever government comes to power in islamabad they the march is going on there are disappearances which happen pakistani media doesn't talk about that the balochistan i think nothing absolute silence what is happening in their so called azad kashmir the protests which are happening silence even on that and here you have in india you know everybody says oh pakistani media is so free and forthcoming bhai they are only focused on punjab that nobody talks about actually indians have no idea many indians most indians don't have any idea about pakistan the dynamics of pakistan how it functions and this is the damage that imran khan has caused have you ever seen punjabis of pakistan protesting on the street very rarely so you'll have somebody protesting in balochistan you'll have people pr- protesting in khyber pakhtunkhwa or in sindh 
This is the first time where the masses of Punjab have come down and started protesting against the army. An army that is 70% Punjabi for all practical purposes. So, I think yes. And as far as uh, you talked about the Pashtun Tahafuz movement, uh, see, uh, Manzoor Pashtin, all these are left-leaning people. Hmm. They're essentially communists. And they want justice within the framework of the Pakistani constitution. And Manzoor Pashtin has never said that I want an independent country. He never said that Afghanistan is not going to be able to He's never made those sort of statements. Now, how does Pakistan react? How does Pakistan react? Okay, let's do a job. Let's Ali Wazir. Let's do a job. Let's take Mohsen Dawar from home. This is their mindset. And these are elected members of National Assembly. Let's take them from home. I, and I have said this to my Pakistani friends so many times. I am confused against all their societal reputation. How are the Pashtuns so quiet and so nice? They remind you of, you know, the Khudai Khidmatgars of, hmm. of Frontier Gandhi. You mentioned him some time back. Na? Khan Abdul yeah. Ghaffar Khan. Unke saath bhi to yehi hua tha. And these Pashtuns, the day the Pashtuns start getting, because they're two sides of the same coin. And I'm not saying that they are similar. They are not. They are poles apart. They are worlds apart. But the fact of the matter is that even the Taliban, right? They are Deobandi Muslims, right? Uh, the Afghan Taliban and hmm. the Tehrik e Taliban Pakistan. Hmm the TTP. Now, and they also believe in Afghan nationalism. Right? And they said, attack the which is why they don't recognize the Durand line. They said, it's nonsense and all. We don't recognize the Durand line. Fact of the matter is that there will be a time and I very strongly believe and Mr. Devashar is here and he'll shed more light. He knows far more on this topic than I do. But the fact of the matter is that I think this is Pakistan's uh, biggest fault line which is just ticking under the surface. The Pashtuns. The Pashtuns. Oh, ho. Oh. Absolutely, absolutely, Smita. It is so dangerous. It is so dangerous that what they have seen in Balochistan is nothing once the Pashtuns get, you know, highly armed, highly motivated, enough members in the armed forces, enough members in the bureaucracy, right? They control Karachi for all practical purposes. After after the MQM, uh, you know, is, is on the ventilator or the ICU, uh, I mean, it's there, but it's not there. And, mm -hmm. and uh, Altaf, the leadership is gone. The leadership is gone, and yeah. Altaf is outside. But but the he's been outside for what thirty years or more? Thirty no. years, yeah. And now he can't yeah. even make those telephone calls and all yeah. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. the jalsas used. don't get the crowds anymore. No, 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 no. no. Abu, he's now banned from doing Altaf Bhai is now uh, this thing. But the fact of the matter is that the fruit business, the transport business, the logistics business in Karachi is controlled by the Pashtuns. And where did that attack happen? That Baloch woman, when she attacked, you know, the Confucius Institute, those those people. It it was done by Baloch, it was done in Karachi. Because, and it came out in the Pakistani media, now Baloch have a tie-up with the, the with the Taliban. Hmm. The Baloch freedom fighters now have tied up with with uh, various factions of Taliban or TTP for that matter. It is the same thing. I don't I don't I don't see any difference between the TTP and the Afghan Taliban. I think they're the one and the same. When we talk about patience and you know these disappearances, you know, yeah, both common cheese eh? disappear okay. It's a kind of an accepted thing. It disappear, hoge, fir appear. Ho Somewhere blood money has been paid or something has happened. Or the understanding ki agar journalist hai, then he will go to America. Or he will stop anchoring, you know, or he will stop coming on television. Matlab, ye disappear, jo hai, it's a common thing. How long? Or the, the, the Pakhtuns are not exactly known for their patience. And if this is the kind of atrocities that are happening on them, how long do you think that that patience will last? Will that also explode into a kind of a militant movement against the existing, uh, you know, setup in Pakistan? You see, first about the Baloch. You see, people disappear and reappear. They reappear as dead bodies. Mm. In Balochistan, you can't imagine the agony of the parents, the brothers and the sisters when people have been taken away and nobody is there to cover it for yeah, them. You've written a book on Balochistan yeah. in which you mention all this. Yeah. About like Hamid so Meen, for example, yeah. did a program and he was shot almost fatally. He, you know, So the, the media blackout is there because the army, this is the army's red lines. You can say nothing about the Baloch or what we are doing in Balochistan. It's only through social media now that things have started coming out. Similar with the uh, PTM, the Pashtun Tarafas movement, Mainstream media doesn't cover them, but thanks to social media, they're able to put out visuals, put out videos, the diaspora then circulates it, so people have come to know what is happening over there. But the point that you made, yes, you see, the 
की एलिमेंट ऑफ पश्तून वाली इज रिवेंज और बदल and there is no time limit a pashtun that's also a word which i i read in your book i didn't know it is badal it's yeah. not badla it's badal is badal yeah. you call it badla but they call it badal. they call it badal a pashtun the famous saying that a pashtun took revenge after 100 years and said he took it too soon so it is pushed dar pushed you know generation after Genera- generation after generation they, they, it festers hmm. that i have to take the revenge the killing of my father here they have butchered pashtuns like anything the ptm in you know when they pushed out when they did operations in uh, waziristan 2 million people were made idps they are proud pashtuns they had to live in camps they had to go out with their begging bowl to get rations from in urban areas of pakistan they were treated as terrorists racial profiling was done wo sab is all festering but there there are thousands of them rotting in jails right now yeah. right so so After let, let the me, crack uh, down yeah. on them so, but kya farak padega nahi अभी फर्क नहीं पड़ेगा बट वेन यू सेट जब फटेगा सो टुडे ऑलरेडी व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इज द टीटीपी व्हिच इज एन आर्म्ड मूवमेंट अर्लियर इट वाज शरिया इन फाटा एंड शरिया इन ऑल ऑफ पाकिस्तान टुडे नूरवली मसूद नूरवली मसूद हुज द हेड ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट एन इंडिपेंडेंट फाटा टू डीमर्जर ऑफ फाटा एंड दैट दिस इज आवर लैंड दिस इज वी विल हैव इंडिपेंडेंस ओवर हियर नाउ इफ दे वर टू टाई अप विद द बलोच नो नो विद द पीटीएम पश्तून तहफुज मूवमेंट व्हिच इज अ नॉन वायलेंट थिंग Pashtun nationalist party and a nationalist violent movement. Can you imagine what state will be in uh, of and they tie up with the Afghan Taliban? And here you have Pakistan who keep talking about several separatist movements in India. But yes. what you are telling me is that Fata separate होना चाहता है या there are people in Fata who want to separate. The Balochis want to separate. Or the so-called Azad Kashmir के बारे में तो कोई बात ही नहीं करता वहाँ पे कि वहाँ पे भी separatist हो गए कि तंग आ चुके हैं कि बस करो. we are t- sick and tired and they see the they see the prosperity in indian kashmir right now yeah. you know at the risk of being labeled as a bhakt right now i might just turn around and say ki prosperity hai kashmir mein yeah. in indian kashmir True. they are seeing that yeah. and they are seeing the ghurbat in pakistani kashmir and there is but nobody is talking about that in the pakistani media yeah. nobody is nobody is referring to these separatist movements in pakistan True. and so, also just to finish my point See, Pakistan tried to drive a wedge between the TTP and the Afghan Taliban. After they took over in Kabul, they told the Afghan Taliban that our TTP could defang karke you send them over to us and we'll take care of them. Afghan Taliban said nothing doing because what Pakistan forgot was that when the US bombed uh, the Taliban in 2001, they all sought shelter either in Quetta or in Waziristan, and the tribesmen gave them shelter, protection, looked after them. and it is these tribes been terror who are part of the ttp hmm. so as per pushtun wali there is no way that the afghan taliban will turn against the ttp so they told pakistan it's your problem you sort it out at best we will facilitate negotiations and ask the ttp to talk to you but you sort out along with your ulama's what their problem is okay. and of those negotiations are broken down okay. so if the afghan taliban the ttp the pashtun tahfuz movement and even the mainstream parties like the awami national party the pakhtun khwa milli awami Uh, party which are pashtun mainstream political parties jamaat ulama islam fazlur rehman they all got together recently in something called the pashtun qaumi uh, jirga and it's a very nascent it's a just a green shoot there mm-hmm. at the moment but who knows in the next 5 to 10 years what happens okay uh, gorav you know you've been uh, you've been watching pakistan for so long you've been in the armed forces in india and uh, you have come on television channels and you you completely against this mombatti brigade that you refer to very often that you know india should open talks with pakistan and things now we've also had an indian prime minister who said that a strong and stable pakistan uh, is in india's interest you have said to the contrary that you know pakistan toote to fir theek you tell me now that if uh, if what we are hearing now that you know the pakhtuns also bahut ho chuka uh, there are separatist movements in pakistan what is there any good for india if pakistan breaks up or is it good for india if pakistan stabilizes itself and democracy gets some hold in pakistan smita i think it's a function of intent and capability uh, today pakistan has the intent to cause india harm but does not have the capability because of its own shenanigans its own lack of money it being in the fatf for more than 4 4 and a half years close to 5 years uh, i think all these factors are there the day the day uh, pakistan has capability there will be again a 
or an Akshardham temple attack, they will do it again. That's number one. Number two, I'd like to say that, uh, you know, uh, to quote uh, General Ashfaq Parvez Kiani, former chief of army staff of Pakistan, you know, he said that if you have capability, intent can change overnight. Mm. Uh, you see, basically what is happening, I, I, you know, a lot of lot of people have said, army generals have said, and a lot of diplomats have made this point that a stable Pakistan is in India's uh, in India's favor. You know, it'll help India if there is a stable. How? I haven't. If somebody can explain to me logically, I think this is this is uh, aman ki aasha wala jo pyar hai na hmm. ki uh, aisa ho jayega, phir aisa ho jayega, hai na? Like uh, a lot of lot of people in Delhi, they miss. Uh, you know, Lahore, in a time, who didn't see Lahore, who didn't see Lahore, who didn't see Lahore. All this is fraud. This is all fraud. Right? Uh, and I'll tell you why this is a lie. Uh, I, I may sound slightly radical when I say it, but I'll say it anyway. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they have attacked us. Hmm. They have killed Indians. <laughs> they have waged war. Hmm. The existence of Pakistan is hmm. detrimental to India's national security. Repeat that. The existence of Pakistan is detrimental to India's national security. If That's a very radical line. Gaurav. I'll tell you why. Hmm. They attacked us in 47, 48. Hmm. They attacked us in 65. They attacked us in 71. Hmm. Operation Chengiz Khan. Right? Operation Gibraltar in 1965. They attacked us in Kargil. Why are they not attacking us now? Because they cannot. They will attack us again. <laughs> and I'll just tell you one thing here. Hmm. A lot of people say, oh, you're sounding radical. Oh, you know, you don't, uh, you don't, uh, you don't want... Love. There is no love between India and Pakistan. No, love to a lag baat hai. Wo to, wo to soch bhi nahi sakte abhi. But then a peaceful coexistence, wo bhi nahi? Nahi ho sakta. Kahan hua hai? Hmm. Aap mujhe bata dijiye ki ye 5 saal ka peaceful coexistence. Ye kabhi nahi hua. Ye jhoot hai. Ye humne jhoot apne aap ko becha hai. Indians have sold themselves. And I, th- I, am, I, I feel very, very strongly because so many of my friends, you know, their names are in the National War Memorial. Yeah. I, I don't have, I have no forgiveness in my heart for Pakistan. Right? Uh, it, it can be an emotional reaction from my side, but the fact of the matter is, Smita, that ye phir attack karenge, ye phir hamla karenge, aap dosti ka haad badhaenge, ye saap phir dasega, this is going to happen again and again. Till the time you solve the problem. You know, what we are doing wrong in Kashmir, I'll tell you, we, what we are doing wrong in Kashmir, Smita, is simply that, you know, a problem that exists in Rawalpindi, we are trying to solve it in Srinagar. Right? It's, it's like a tap. Jisse ek, ek nal hai na, jisse paani nikal raha hai. वो पानी हमारे कमरे में आ रहा है हम वाइपर लेके उसको साफ कर रहे हैं साफ कर रहे हैं फिर लेकिन नल ऑन है वो नल पाकिस्तान के अंदर है लेकिन हम इंडिया में झाड़ू लगा रहे हैं पोछा लगा रहे हैं कि पानी चला जाएगा अनलेस यू गो इनटू पाकिस्तान एंड स्विच ऑफ दैट टैप फिजिकली इट इज वो सोसाइटी इतनी रेडिकलाइज हो गई है इतनी रेडिकलाइज हो गई है दैट यू नो इवन वेन देर इज अ क्रिकेट मैच वन कमेंटेटर विल से दैट टूडे यू गोट हैव दिस ग्रैंड क्रिकेट मैच बिटवीन टू न्यूक्लियर पार्स दैट इज द माइंड सेट द पाकिस्तानी साफ आई एम नॉट सेंग ऑल ऑफ दम आर बैड आई एम नॉट सेंग दैट बट द वर्ल्ड विल बी अ सेफर प्लेस विदाउट पाकिस्तान ओके आई जस्ट से वन थिंग इस इज द प्रॉब्लम इन पाकिस्तान इज दर माइंड सेट हैज बीन पॉइजन अगेंस्ट इंडिया बिकॉज ऑफ द टेक्सट बुक्स इन गवर्नमेंट स्कूल्स वो अपनी किताबें अगर खराब कर रहे हैं कोई और तो नहीं कर रहा उनके लिए बट यू नो फाइव इयर ओल्ड किड इन स्कूल वो बेचारा अपने क्या करेगा ही इज टॉट ही इज टॉट दैट हुज इन एनिमी Hindu is your enemy. Indian is your enemy. Christian is your enemy. Jew is your enemy. They are all out to get you. Yeah, that Jain Dixit's book in which he mentions, right? No, there are when studies of Pakistani textbooks yeah. which have been Correct. done in Pakistan itself, and I quote that in my first book. That is the kind of hatred that has been generated. If Pakistan was to change the textbooks today, the first student will come out after 15, 18, 20 years. But they've been brainwashed over generations. Look, so you, you know you can't expect. any kind of it's especially in punjabi schools in punjab schools the punjabi muslim man is the real hatred against india and against hindu comes from them and they are the dominant community in pakistan so when you know uh, you've you've been uh, you've been in the government you've now uh, you're an author you also are in the national security advisory board now in you've seen 
you met with pakistanis you you've been part of conversations where they you know which is a different line than what gorov is saying where he says that existence of pakistan is detrimental to india's continuity but you've heard the other side too what is their point of view do they really are there is there a constituency in pakistan which thinks that nahi hum coexistence ho sakti hai it's only tactical yeah. because you're in a back foot because you're in a weak wicket yes and a punjabi will always compromise i'm sorry to sound uh, you know <laughs> but they are very practical one minute when you say punjabi will only compromise what you tr- you what you're saying is that the conversation happens only among the punjabis the others don't matter in pakistan right the sindhi right? the baloch and the pashtun don't have a problem they are not so much concerned about kashmir hmm. the problem the well spring for hatred against india comes from punjab hmm. and today because they are in a weak wicket they see the development that is taking place in india the indian economy is doing so hmm. uh, so well and india is doing well it's diplomatically is doing so well they say ki you know now let's moderate our hmm. um, you know whatever we want to do let's improve ourselves get to a position of strength hmm. and then usme karne ko kya hai once you have the capability intent will change so yeah it's a tactical thing or i think uh, that's exactly what you were uh, talking about also. what i am trying to also say is apart from what mr devashar said about the radicalization of the punjabi textbooks uh 3 years back i was in anantnag before this covid thing happened and I usually carry these toffees and chocolates in my pocket or bachcho ko dete hain bachche jai hind bolte hain and you know you wave to kids and you go away and all that so i like to interact with people there and kids and all that so i do that mujhe 5 6 saal ki ladki mili thi i quoted this uh, once before and i said uh, ek ladke ko pucha beta aap kya karenge ji main engineer banunga maine pilot banna hai somebody said main ba, main ba, fauj mein jaunga somebody said mujhe vakeel banna hai ya main apne father ka business jo bhi jiska jo tha This girl said, this five six year old girl, कि जब मैं जब मैं बड़ी हो जाऊंगी तो मेरे बेटे होंगे और मैं उन बेटों को जिहाद का मतलब सिखाऊंगी. Who poisoned her mind? And and I asked the colonel there, the Rashtra Rifles officer who was there with me. He said, sir, I can fight against Pakistan. I can fight against Lashkar. But in front of this girl, I have lost. My weapons are useless in front of this. This is what Adil Ahmed Dar, the suicide bomber of Pulwama. वो तो कश्मीरी था, वो तो पाकिस्तानी नहीं था. उसके दिमाग में इतना जहर किसने डाला कि क्योंकि तुम्हें कभी किसी फौजी ने आज से दस साल पहले थप्पड़ मारा इसलिए यू ब्लो योर सेल्फ अप एंड किल फोर्टी पीपल वी आर फाइटिंग अगेंस्ट अ माइंड सेट एंड आई एम टेलिंग यू ड्रामेटिक दो इट मे साउंड दिस इज नॉट हेटफुल आई एम जस्ट बीइंग ट्रूथफुल दैट दिस इज एन एग्जिस्टेंशियल फाइट ये फिर करेंगे दिस इज टैक्टिकल लाइक मिस्टर देवाशर सेट एग्जैक्टली ये टैक्टिकल है स्ट्रेटेजिक नहीं है ये टैक्टिकल है अभी उनको लग रहा है कि ये भारी पड़ रहे हैं मौसम खराब है तो दरवाजे बंद करके अंदर बैठे हैं जिस दिन धूप आएगी मौसम खुलेगा इंडिया इंडिया तो ये जो डीरेडिकलाइजेशन मूव्स हो रहे हैं में इफ दैट इज एट अ फास्टर पेस और एन इक्वल पेस विल दैट बी एबल टू कॉम्बैट दिस यू नो दिस दिस रेडिकलाइजेशन विच ये जो जिहादी माइंड है मुझे नहीं लगता कि वी कैन डू इट एट दैट पेस चीजें खराब करना आसान होता है ठीक करना बहुत मुश्किल है अब अभी बोला ना सर ने क्या बोला आपको कि आज से 20 साल के बाद आठ टेक्स्ट बुक ठीक करेंगे 20 साल के बाद होगा राइट केरला इज द मोस्ट लिटरेट स्टेट इन इंडिया राइट सबसे ज्यादा तो आईसीएस के जिहादी तो केरला से जाते हैं तो इट्स नॉट जस्ट अबाउट एजुकेशन इट्स अबाउट माहौल इट्स अबाउट एनवायरनमेंट आल्सो। यू नो यू वर टॉकिंग अबाउट सोशल मीडिया शॉर्ट वाइल अगो दैट the media was controlled and that's why पीपल इन पाकिस्तान डिट नो मच अबाउट इट बट सोशल मीडिया में बात फैल जाती है नाउ you know i'm going to come into the aspect of information warfare uh the the isi moves like like a you know a platoon when it comes to information warfare india on the other hand seems like it is fighting on the back foot all the time do you feel that too no. do you see, you see that? The, the the problem in india i think is that we still have not recognized media as an element of national power we are still very apprehensive about the media hmm. it's a double edged weapon ki usko hi leak na kar de story na nikal jaye you know kya hoga implication kya pakistan is weaponized media you look at the ispr and the info operations of the isi they have recruited thousands of young people so they can start a twitter storm a hashtag campaign at the drop of a hat arshdeep you know in that cricket match yeah. he dropped a catch and look at the kind of Uh, trolling came out. He's a Khalistani, you know. The poor fellow, this Shami again. The same. So they're looking for opportunities because they know that media is an element of national power. 
Yeah. We have to develop that mindset and look at strategic communication as a whole of government approach. You know, a handout ho gaya, kisi ministry ne handout kar diya, and you expect the media will pick it up and not develop it into. It doesn't work that way. Today's age, you have to get your narrative in first and get it in effectively. Baad mein rebuttal hota jaye, koi fark nahi padta. You have to get your narrative in first, and for that, you need very sharp. people recognizing that it's an element of national power you know uh, gorav for the one person who may not know who's watching this show on youtube or whatever that you know you're actually a major also a major in the army uh, and you served the forces this arshdeep thing is something which is so recent it it bothered me so much it shouldn't have but it it really gave me sleepless nights you know for you know for our viewers or listeners uh, in sitting in countries where cricket is not a religion just to recap a little bit and there was this dropped catch by an indian cricketer ashdeep and and within minutes after he dropped it the entire pakistani crowd on twitter started off that we have won the match because of this guy who's a you know obviously he's a sikh and sikh means khalistani and sikh has betrayed india and stood by pakistan now by the time you know indians or india tried to say that ye these are not indians who are saying this these are these twitter handles are by pakistanis jab tak wo hua which was some anonymous handle by what 3 am india time who brought out the ip addresses and said that these are not indians who are saying it bhai they are not indians uh, uh, screaming at ashdeep on twitter these are pakistani handles you know by then it had picked up a life of its own yes. and then even indian newspapers and ethnic newspapers uh, abroad and then foreign newspapers had all picked that up the websites had all picked up because and by the time india woke up and india reacted i i mean official handles it had it was 7 8 damage. damage had been done by then yes you know so our information warfare as i said it doesn't move with the speed that ispr does and i am not even convinced that those were ispr handles you never know they could be just some radicalized pa- uh, pakistani handles who are sitting and doing this faking See, uh, it i often tell the pakistanis that the only strike core that pakistan has is ispr Hmm. बाकी सब फाल चुके हैं बाकी कुछ काम नहीं करते इनका एक ही स्ट्राइक कर रहा है एसपीआर वही काम करता है बस एंड लाइक मिस्टर देवाशर वेरी राइटली सेड what they have done is you know what we don't understand we think it's a government function one second before again i'm going to interrupt you because yeah. there might be people who don't even know the full form of ispr and what the ispr does thoda sa in- acha Haan. so so in 1949 pakistan created a tri services agency called the inter services public relations and while it's called inter services the head is more or less always a army man that's what i've seen in the past 20 25 years i don't know if i missed out somebody but generally it's a khaki wardi wearing guy and they are the people who do information warfare and public relations for the pakistan army they are the people who order the shooting of a hamid mir say that matiullah jaan ko utha ke le aao ek kaam karna zara asatur ki pitai karna uska hath tod these are the people who browbeat the media who tell pemra right the the uh, electronic regulatory authority in pakistan पैमरा को बोलो नोटिस भेजेगा दो दिन के लिए उसका चैनल बंद करो ऑल दीज थिंग्स सो द फ्लो ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन इज मैनेज बाय आई एस पी आर एंड दे ट्राई टू मैनेज द नेशनल फ्लो ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन नॉट जस्ट सरकारी बट ऑल्सो सिविलियन विच इंक्लूड्स इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मीडिया वेब ट्विटर फेसबुक एट्सेट्रा एट्सेट्रा वट पाकिस्तान डज इज पाकिस्तान इज रियलाइज दैट दिस इज नॉट अ फॉजीज गेम एंड दिस इज समथिंग दैट वी इन इंडिया हैव नॉट रियलाइज एंड वी मस्ट ये सिविलियन का काम है you need songwriters you need editors you need poets right uh, you you need you need script writers you need hackers you need people who are like human bots in their thousands this is what you need this is not something that you see today in today's when we talk about ne- uh, network centric warfare and where 5g has come in and all that today one or two teenagers with laptops right can cause far more damage than an infantry brigade they can cause far more damage we need to realize it's it's cyber it's information warfare and i think what and india can do it 10 times better than pakistan because in the end it's a function of vision and money hmm. it's a function of vision and money 
एक कोई करने वाला करवाने वाला हू अंडरस्टैंड दैट दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट और पैसा हमारे पास दुनिया भर का पैसे का कोई नहीं गेट अ बिल्डिंग इन प्लेस दैट्स व्हाट आई हैव टोल्ड पीपल गेट अ बिल्डिंग इन प्लेस फिल इट अप विद पीपल राइट टेल देम क्या करना है एंड दिस बिल्डिंग टेक्स ट्वेंटी फोर इंटू सेवन दिस बिल्डिंग नेवर स्लीप्स राइट आप करने दीजिए अब पाकिस्तान में कितनी फॉल्ट लाइन है मैं आपको बताता हूँ भी गिनवा के ना ठीक है यू फॉरगेट अबाउट शियान सुननी कितने देवबंदी हैं ठीक है कितने बरेलवी हैं कितने शियाओं में से सेवनर्स हैं ट्वेल्वर्स हैं कितने अहले अदीस हैं आप एक ये क्या इन... सेवनर्स ट्वेल्वर्स क्या होता है ये शियाओं ये शियाओं के हैं ना अच्छा इनके बेहतर फिर के हैं मुसलमानों के बेहतर सेवेंटी टू इन पाकिस्तान सेवेंटी टू इफ यू नो वॉट टू डू एंड ट्रस्ट यू मी वेन आई से दिस आई नो वॉट टू डू इफ समी वर टू गिव मी मनी ना आई कैन कॉज द काइंड ऑफ डैमेज दैट इमरान खान इज कॉजिंग इन साइड पाकिस्तान क्योंकि ये तो ये तो पागल है ना इनको किसी ने बोल दिया लब्बैक लब्बैक या रसूल अल्लाह चल के पूरा आधा लाहौर जला दिया क्यों क्योंकि फ्रांस में किसी ने खाके बनाए थे कैन यू इमेजिन द माइंड सेट फ्रांस में किसी ने प्रॉफिट मोहम्मद का कार्टून बनाया था भाइयों ने आधा लाहौर जला दिया दीज आर गुड पीपल बट वी नीड टू टैप इन टू दिस इट्स अ कंट्री क्रिएटेड इन द नेम ऑफ रिलीजन सो दे थिंक दैट दैट रिलीजन प्रोटेक्शन इज देयर जॉब रिगार्डलेस ऑफ वेयर उसमें तो इनके जितने भी इदारे हैं जितने भी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है पाकिस्तान में पाकिस्तान के अंदर सबसे तगड़ी फौज निकल गई एंड अ जनरल यू नो इट्स इट्स लाइक अ जनरल पासिंग ऑर्डर्स दैट आई वांट दिस डन एंड इट इज डन डेमोक्रेसीज आर ऑलवेज मैसी इज मैसी एग्जैक्टली दिस इज एग्जैक्टली वट आई सेट दैट डेमोक्रेसी इज यू नो हम लोग वी आर स्टक इन सिस्टम्स राइट जब सिस्टम्स होते हैं ना देन यू नीड सेवरल <laughs> layers of you know approvals and grants and those kind of things it is not a one person wa ek isi chief hota hai who decides everything you know like uh, when we were talking about narratives uh, you, like you said that in your book you talk about the pashtuns who didn't write their narrative the narrative was written by the brits for mm-hmm. them but the same thing happens like when balakot happened they got the narrative first because by the time our narrative came and of course we have our politicians who say ki video proof do yeah. right unke yahan to aise kuch nahi hai they put out ki kauwe jala diye kauwe gire the aur kuch nahi hua right and everybody followed the script followed the script but in our country it doesn't happen like that what do you think about it no it is you see because the unfortunate polarization even when matters of national security and foreign policy are concerned has become deep seated that people think that by scoring cheap points they are somehow damaging the a government they don't realize they are actually damaging the country whatever is your political fight that's separate you must you know parliament here other places are there but when it comes to issues of national security then the national interest must be must predominate that i think has got somewhere you know dhundla gaya it's it's not happening to the extent that it should in kashmir do you think that in in their so called azad kashmir uh, the narrative is because about the media you know off camera we were talking about how even the media there uh, is uh, is not uh, is not free see ba pehli baat to wahan pe koi kashmiri nahi bolta there are very few people who speak kashmiri because the land that was taken was mostly jammu it was not kashmir So what essentially happens there is that all these people, you know, from Mirpur and all that, some people in Muzaffarabad speak Kashmiri. Sure. Resettled, ho gaye the, there was resettled. Resettled. No, they 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 basically they've turned the whole place punjabi hmm. and today a lot of people there is dissonance there in the sense that there, there is there is frustration there because there is no they don't have an airport there in 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 pok unke paas dhanka railway station nahi hai tuta puta hai there is nothing if you want to catch a flight you have to come out of pok and then go into islamabad or whichever is the closest and then catch a flight so 
they're in a very bad state they don't have good hospitals i mean finally these things do matter growth matters they have yeah. no media also that's also controlled by unke to unke to jo uh, jo wahan pe uh, mobile phone ki lines istemal karte hain mobile phone ka network hai, that is 4g owned that is owned by the pakistani army controlled by the core of signals so so even their phones are tapped that means they don't pakistanis don't trust they might say kashmir they ek road ka naam shrinagar road rakh diya wo sab pakistani wo drama mein bade tez hain hmm. but do they trust the kashmiris no they don't trust the kashmiris they do not trust the jklf kyon saaf kar di inhone because one day jklf woke up one fine morning i said theek hai hame bharat se to azadi chahiye lekin hame pakistan se bhi chahiye kyunki aapke paas bhi to kashmir hai jaisa na na and yeah changi gal nahi this is not good yaar ab to hum sort out karte hain they started killing jklf people and which is why when al faran came and when lashkar e tayyaba and jaish e mohammed came none of them had kashmir in their names these are all pan islamic names that is what pa- pakistan seeks to control दे हैव द सेम मॉडल इवन इन बलोचिस्तान जब उनको यह देखा कि बलोच नेशनलिज्म बढ़ना शुरू हो गई उन्होंने रेडिकल इस्लामिस्ट मॉल भी वहां पर डाल दिए दे आर डूइंग द सेम टू इवन द पश्तून ये ये सब इनका सेम स्क्रिप्ट ये हर जगह चिपकाते हैं What they did in East Pakistan with the Jamaat e Islami, they're running the same script everywhere. And that, it failed there. It couldn't fail. Ah, that's what yeah, I was absolutely. going to ask yeah. you. Did that since you know it it did not succeed in Bangladesh or East Pakistan? Will it succeed here? Because there also it was an identity, but there it was it was a very fierce identity crisis. Uh, is there similar kind of identity crisis with regard to the Pashtuns, with regard to the Baloches? Uh, is it strong enough for Pakistan to splinter to break up? You see, they have used pan-Islamism, especially Zia did during the time of the Soviet jihad. Hmm. All lot of people came in from the Middle East, from Saudi Arabia, the Sirat Deen Madrasas, and Wahhabi uh, kind of uh, influence. But people forget that the Pashtuns, Afghanistan, has been a very strong center of moderate Sufi Islam. You know, Herat, for example, is called Khake Aliya, the soil of the Sufi saints. Uh, Ghazni was called abode of the uh, uh, Sufi saints. The most famous uh, su- uh, Sufi uh, Sufi shrine in uh, Lahore, Data uh, Data Sab, is actually Al Hajwari who came from Ghazni. So, gradually this Sufi thing will have to reassert itself. Today it is not because it has been overcome by Wahhabis and you know all kinds of things. But once the Sufi culture reasserts itself, which is what Pashtuns, even you would be surprised, Mullah Omar used to visit the grave of his teacher every week. and would also visit other graves though we say he is a cutter wahabi deobandi and this kind of a thing but very strong sufi influence so i think the sufi influence has to come back and will you come back over imran a period khan of time imran khan will bring it no not not imran khan certainly not no? he's with uh, black magic and all that that he is <laughs> no. he's believed to do no no, no pinky pirni does it is right ha pinky pirni ha wo karti hai wo black magic so uh, but she's is, gone on other extreme jins and things like that so that is, is not going to happen there that's not going to happen but you know before you end i want to make two points ji the polarization which imran khan has brought about in pakistan today is absolutely frightening and unbelievable there was political polarization you know ppp pml and hota tha ab social polarization ho gayi in fact don quoted a 7 year old girl who came back from school and told her father that people who are supporters of pti children and those are supporters of nawaz pmln sit separately now we don't even sit together in the classroom in the classroom one second you know this political situation is what do you see at the moment there are 30 million people who don't have shelter because of the floods there's a looming water crisis in pakistan they have an education emergency you know what i wrote about in my first book economy is on a slippery slope population is growing at 2.4% 3 million people are entering the labor force every year year after year for the next 40 years there are no jobs these are the kind of issues that are eating away pakistan and nobody is paying attention to these fundamental issues of the country they're all bothered about ki imran khan ne kya keh diya uski rally mein kya ho raha hai shahbaz sharif post mortem ki baat kar raha hai where is pakistan headed the, that they are on a precipice they could fall either way either embrace democracy see that the success that it's had in countries around them and embrace that or else go into a state of chaos like afghanistan has done what do you see uh, gorav what do you see happening as we conclude it's the last question smita it's uh, pakistan is not a normal country pakistan will continue to exist in some form or the other truncated balkanized or otherwise or otherwise but pakistan will never be normal they'll keep on limping be, this country will keep on 
being on ventilator from one year to the next to the next sometimes the americans will give money now shaba sharif went and he got some money from the chinese and then he got some money from the saudis and now he started this whole tamasha about climate justice and he's saying iske bhi ji paise de do thode se hmm. and w- w- what is this whole thing with the saudis ke ji ase bhi musliman the tusse bhi musliman to mangne ki aadat pad gayi na fir mangne ki aadat nahi hai wo sirf mang nahi rahe wo keh rahe jo pichla manga tha wo bhi maaf kar do ab naya de do hmm. you know, there is a difference वो अलग अलग लेवल से मांगते हैं जैसे मैं दुकानदार के पास गया ना उसने बोला कि जी चीनी पचास रुपए किलो है फॉर एग्जांपल तो मैंने बोला नहीं मैं चालीस की दूंगा मैं चालीस की दे दो तो उसने चालीस की दे दी जब मैं नेगोशिएट नहीं कर पाए फिर मैंने बोला नहीं जी चालीस से कम नहीं दूंगा दुकानदार रुक गया फिर मैंने बोला चलो एक मुठ्ठी फ्री में डाल दो इसके ऊपर और अगर नहीं देते तो मैं अपने आप को उड़ा दूंगा गोली मार दूंगा गोली मार दूंगा एंड साथ में तुम भी मरोगे मैं भी मरूंगा कोई फायदा नहीं शोले वो वीरू टैंकर के ऊपर चढ़ा रहता है ना कि अगर मेरी बसंती से शादी नहीं करी तो फिर हैजा हो जाएगा गांव में लोग मर जाएंगे अगर मैंने सुसाइड कर लिया तो दैट इज पाकिस्तान सिटिंग ऑन द वाटर टैंकर ड्रंक एंड टेलिंग द वर्ल्ड कि हमारे पास न्यूक्लियर वेपन्स है बॉस अगर हमें पैसा नहीं दिया तो फिर तुम देखना क्या होता है एंड देव बिन डूइंग इट सक्सेसफुली they been blackmailing the world and the world has been giving them money but then what uh, i mean after seeing the rush i don't want to go into the russia ukraine crisis but after seeing that you can actually call the bluff on the nuclear uh, uh, thing isn't it on the button uh, what russia is we no <coughs> with pakistan with regard to pakistan all the time using this nuclear button as a big yeah. thing that hum अपने आप को उड़ा देंगे and then there'll be destruction in the entire region or the subcontinent or or beyond you know that is propaganda you know sheikh rashid saying pow pow ke bomb you know we can do this yeah. i think that the pakistan army leadership which controls the actual button is responsible enough not to do going for this kind of nuclear brinkmanship i think so at the moment at least but the danger with the nuclear issue is that they don't believe in india's nuclear doctrine we have made it very clear that even if you have a tnw tactical nuclear weapon we will have massive retaliation they said ni tum ke nahi kar sakte you can't do it If we have a one kiloton uh, nuclear weapon, you will not bomb Lahore with a thirty kiloton. You can't do it. I think, but Puri and Balakot ke baad don't they realize ki ham kar sakte? Exactly. Ha. The frightening thing is that in their doctrine, when you meet people, they say, "Tomare mein himmat nahi hai karne ke liye." That is the dangerous thing. Not so much as hmm. you know, the, they're threatening. They won't. You know, I, I teach. I don't think so at the moment. They're not ir- that irrational at the moment. All right. Thank you so much for this conversation, uh, Mr. Deveshar. Thank you, Gaurav, for Thank coming you. in and giving us uh, uh, two points of view which are almost similar. I would feel that after this conversation, but of course, uh, your articulation is different and interesting. And all the best to you in your endeavors, uh, Gaurav. You are Thank now, you. Uh, you know, moved into uh, the think tank space, and you're doing very well in that. Thank you very much. So all the best to you too you and much. i look forward to uh, having you back with your fifth book soon thank you so thank much thank you so much for uh, having me thank it's you. a really enjoy this conversation and wish you all the best in your new venture thank you thank you so much thank you all right Thank you for watching or listening in to ANI podcast with Smita Prakash do like or subscribe on whichever channel you listen to this or watch this namaste jai hind